Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Ruang Hu. Mr. Zheng Hua Wang and I uh, both work at the Huawei Cloud Computing Business Unit. We together contributed uh, histogram support in Apache Spark 2.3. In this talk, we, we, want to, uh, we will tell you why we want to develop this feature and uh, how you can uh, use this feature effectively to deal with SKU data distributions. <coughs> so in today's talk, first we will briefly talk about the Spark SQL or Catalyst architecture. And then we briefly uh, uh, describe uh, the cost base optimizer you know, we developed in Apache Spark 2.2 and then what kind of statistics we collect. And then in uh, Spark 2.3 release, we, we further enhance it with, uh, with histogram support. And uh, finally, we will show you, you know, what configuration parameters you need to set. This is a uh, Spark SQL or Catalyst architecture. A user uh, can submit either SQL query or some application program using DataFrame API. And then, his, and then the input will be converted into unresolved uh, logical query plan. And then with catalog information, the analyzer component will convert it, uh, convert it into, into a logical query plan. And then see here, the logical query optimization component will kick in and then convert from the, uh, from the uh, un, uh, unoptimized logical plan to op optimized logical plan. And then there's a physical query optimization. It will further you know, com transform that into the physical query plan. And then among the multiple physical query plan, then we will choose uh, the best uh, uh, physical plan and, and then send this, send this to the execution engine. As for the query optimizer uh, uh, in Spark SQL, Spark SQL's query optimizer is, uh, is based on both on rules and the cost. Today, Spark SQL uh, has probably more than 50 rules. And the most of Spark SQL's uh, optimizer's rules are the heuristic rules. As you know, the heuristic rules are based on, uh, based on experience. For example, like, uh, push down predicate. We basically want to push down the predicate or filtering condition down you know, in, in, the, in the query execution in, in plan. We also want to prune out those columns that are not referenced in a uh, user query, etc. And then in Spark 2.2 release, we added cost base uh, optimizer, CBO. Okay. And, um, I want to say that you know, CBO itself you know, uh, can be a, a very complex uh, task. And uh, as for the release we put in in 2.2, it was a good and a working framework. Uh, 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 the, the reason why I said that it is, uh, uh, it is, uh, it is just a, a good framework uh, to, to, to begin with is because usually you know, it takes several years for the CBO to, to mature. In Spark Release 2.2, we focus on statistics collection, and then, and then we estimate the cardinality for each operator. And then based on the cardinality and the data size information, then we try to decide you know, which site should be used as, you know, which table should be used as a build site uh, of the hash join um, operation. We also try to decide you know, between the broadcast join and the shuffle join. We also, we also did join reordering. <coughs> As for the statistic uh, we collect, you know, it contains both table level statistics and the column level uh, statistics. Basically, the goal is to compute the cost for each operator. Okay? And uh, the cost is based on the number of uh, output records, or we call it cardinality, and also the, the size of, of the output. And the, based on the cost calculation, we try to adjust, uh, uh, try to adjust query, uh, uh, query execution plan. 
as for the table level uh, 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 statistics what we collect, a user can issue uh, analyze table and then table name and, and then compute statistics command. And what we do is then we will collect, uh, we will find out the number of records and also the size of the table in terms of bytes. And they save this information into a uh, meta store. As for the column level statistics we collect, okay, a user can issue the table, analyze table, and then table name, and then compute statistics for columns, and then a list of columns. Usually, you do not need to specify all the columns of a table. You only need to specify those columns that are referenced in the predicate, okay? And those columns that are used as joint column, and also those columns that are referenced in the, in the group by cross. And for each column, we collect this information. Okay, for numeric date and the timestamp, we collect you know, the number of distinct value, its maximum value, its mean value, and also number of no, number of now value, and also the length. Similarly, we also collect information for the stream and the binary data type. But for binary data type, we do not have uh, mean value. I mean, we, we do not uh, collect maximum value or or mean value. And then in in Spark 2.2, we only collect those statistics at you know at the table level. I mean for for, for all the records in a table, but we do not collect the frequency count for each value of a column. Okay. So basically, when we when we try to uh, estimate, we just assume that it is a uniform data distribution. But as you know, you know in real world. Real world data are often skewed. For example, in ten, you know here for a donut shop, if you uh, people will find out the number of donuts people um, may buy, you know it will send, it will you know skew around between three and the four. And the, for the for the black cherry tree, you know most of tree will reach the height between seventy and uh, and uh, eighty feet. Okay. So basically, real world data are kind of, I mean, data skew is, is intrinsic, or you can say it's inherent, you know, or in, in the real world data. Okay. So in, in Spark 2.3, you know, we know that histogram is effective in handling, in handling skew distribution. Most people are familiar with this equal width histogram. Equal width histogram basically means the width of the column interval is fixed. Is fixed, and then you have this frequency count. You know, it, it, it may vary. This is this is one way. Another way is is to have a equal height, equal height histogram. What it means is is the the width of the column interval is not fixed. Okay, if the values are kind of sparse in this interval. Then, then, then the width, the width of this column interval will be kind of big. If the values are very dense, you know, in some in some interval, then then the width of this column interval will be very narrow. And then in Spark 2.3, we developed the equal height equal height <laughs> histogram. The reason is we believe equal height histogram is better than equal width histogram. The reason is. You know, equal height histogram can use multiple bucket to show a very skewed value. If something is very, very skewed, you know, say like 10% of, uh, of all the record, okay, equal height can do the better. Another thing is, as for equal width histogram, if you have a very skewed value and, uh, and uh, some other value fall into the same bucket or fall into the, 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 the same column interval, then you cannot tell the impact caused by the very skewed value. Okay. As for the data structure and the algorithm we use, each, each histogram has a default of uh, 254 uh, bucket. The number of 254 bucket uh, you know, can be configured through a configuration parameter. As for the height, the height of, of the histogram, 
basically it is the number of non-na value divided by the number of bucket. So here I mentioned non-na value. Basically, we exclude all the na value. You know, or, you know, we, we exclude all the na value in the in in, in the in the histogram. Okay. And each histogram bucket has the range value of a bucket, basically the, the boundary value. And the number of distinct value in a bucket. You know, in order to get uh, uh, this information, we use uh, two table scans to generate the equal height uh, histogram for all the columns in, in the analyze command. So in the analyze command, you may specify 10 columns, but we still just uh, use uh, two table scan to get, uh, to get all the information we want for, for, the, for the, those 10 columns. And uh, we use approximate percentile class to get the boundary point, uh, condition, I mean the, the boundary value of all the histogram, bu of all the histogram bucket. We also utilize um, hyper log log plus algorithm to compute the number of distinct value in each bucket. Because we use a hyper log log plus plus algorithm, so the number of distinct value is not is not the precise value. Okay, in this in this an approximation. So now I want to uh, discuss you know two major operators that are. Uh, that, uh, that are highly influenced by, the, you know, by, you know, by this new feature, histogram. One is a filter, uh, filter uh, uh, operator. In the filter operator, you usually we have much logical expression, including logical and, or, and the not operators. And then, and then in each logical expression, we have the binary, uh, a comparison operators. Okay, here let me just use one example. Say we want to find out column A, you know, the, the condition column A is less than a constant value B. Okay, and then because we have collected uh, the, 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 uh, the we have collected the column statistic information for column A. So no, so we know column A is the minimum value, and also column A is the maximum value. So it depends on where this value B falls. If value B is less than column A's minimum value, then we know that none of the table records can meet the condition. Then the filtering factor will be zero percent. But if this value B falls between column A's minimum value and the column A's uh, um, maximum value. Okay, then without then basically we try to find out what is the percentage of all the records in this range. Then without histogram, then we have to parade over the entire column range. Uh, column range. So the filtering factor is computed as B value minus column A's uh, minimum value, and then divided by the entire column range, which is A's uh, maximum value minus A's minimum value. And, uh, and uh, this will work only if it is evenly distributed. Then in Spark 2.3, you know, we have, we have a histogram. You know, with histogram information, then we check the range value of uh, of a bucket to see if it should be included in, you know, in our computation. We basically check you know, each bucket you know, one by one. Uh -huh. We may need to parade, okay, but we only parade on the boundary bucket. We do not parade on the entire column range. So wh what do I mean? Here, let me, let me use uh, one, uh, one example. Suppose we have the age distribution of a restaurant. Okay, the total row count is 25. The minimum value is 20, maximum value is 80, and the number of distinct value, NDV, is 17. Suppose we want to find out the row count for this condition, age greater than 40. Okay, you know, the correct answer will be just five. Without histogram, then we use the total 
uh, or ro table row count 25 times this range, you know, 80 minus 40. And then divide it by the entire column, uh, and, 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 uh, the, the entire range of, of the column value, you know, 80 minus 60. Then we estimate that, you know, this filter cardinality will be 16.7, which is, you know, basically three times uh, off the, the, the correct answer. But with, with histogram, then we will estimate that, you know, bucket by bucket. Then we know that, you know, greater than 40. Greater than 40, we check that, you know, the first four bucket do not meet the condition, okay? Only, only one bucket can meet this condition. So only one bucket times the, times, times the height of, of the histogram. Um, uh, so, so it needs five. So we estimate that, you know, it will be five. And uh, here, let me use uh, another uh, example. Suppose we want to find out the row count for the predicate age equal to 28. You know, in this uh, data distribution, 28 is, is a very skewed value. Without histogram, then because this is a one unique value, so 25 times one divided by 17. 17 is the total number of distinct value, okay? Because we assume in this, uh, in this uh, is a uniform distribution. Then we estimate uh, it will be 1.47. So you can see that in this off, uh, uh, so so in this kind of far away from the from the correct answer six. But with a histogram, then we evaluate them you know bucket by bucket. Okay, we know that in the in the number two uh, bucket. Okay, because here its range value is 25 to 28. So in, the num so in the number two bucket, because there are three distinct values, okay, and the value is 28, so it's one over three. So one third of, of, the, of the record in this bucket can meet the condition. And then the next bucket is, uh, because it is from the range 28 to 28, and the number of distinct value is equal to one. So we know that the entire bucket can meet this condition. So in this 1.0, so we one third plus 1.0 times the height of, of the histogram bucket, which is five. Then we estimate that the filter cardinality will be 6.67. So you can see that you know this number is is kind of close to our correct answer. There's another operator that is a joint card. You know we we want to estimate the joint cardinality. And the without histogram, usually when we, when we estimate the number of rows, you know, for this joint condition, A join B on the A dot K1 equal to, uh, equals uh, B dot K1. And the joint cardinality is the number of records in table A times the number of records in table B. And then divided by the larger value of number of distinct value in a dot, in the joint column a dot k1 and another uh, number of distinct value in the joint column b dot k1 okay and uh, here we write formally in this way we i mean basically we assume it is a it's a uniform distribution for both joint columns Say, say here, let, let's look at uh, uh, this, this example. Okay, table A, you know, the joint column, this is the same data distribution as we earlier described for the filter operator. And then for table B, okay, table B it has uh, 20 records, minimum value is 20, maximum value is 90, number of distinct value is 17. Then without histogram, then the joint cardinality estimate is number of uh, records in table A, 25, times number of records in table B, 20, divided by the larger value of the number of distinct value, 17. Then we get 29.4. But the correct answer actually is just 40, uh, it is just 20. So you can see that it is kind of off the, the correct answer by 
by about 47%. And uh, you know, in Spark 2.3, with, with a histogram, then the way we estimate the joint cardinality is, basically is, we, be, we will check bucket by bucket. And uh, we estimate the joint cardinality for each bucket. And then we add them together, OK? So here, this is the AI means, A sub I means, uh, means uh, um, uh, the, the ice bucket of table A, OK? Here, we, we basically estimate the joint cardinality for each bucket, you know, one by one. And then we add them together, OK? By doing this, so, you know, there's one issue. That is uh, because we have the we have a equal equal uh, height equal height histogram, so the bucket of the joint column do not necessarily do not necessarily align. Okay, then what do we do? What do we do? So here, say for example, we have a table A and the table B, and the blue line blue line shows the initial bucket, and the red line basically it means that. For some bucket, we need to split. We need to split into two or three bucket. Okay, we use the red line to represent the new boundary condition. Okay, and then see here. Here we, you know, we list all the all the all the value in the joint column. Okay, so let's look at the uh, uh, number four bucket of table A. Okay, it has a value. It has a range from 28 to 40. But because table B has a boundary value 30, so here we need to split this bucket into two, into two, OK? But then how do we assign the value to this, this two bucket? Then we just pull rate, OK? So for example, for the left bucket, it is 30 minus 28 is two. Two over this entire bucket range is 12. So here it has only one value. And the, the rest of the value will go to the right bucket. As for the number five bucket, you know, this one, it got split into three buckets. That's because in this range, table B has, has, has two boundary lines. And then similarly, for table B, for table B, you know, because for table A, it has a very skewed value, 28, OK? 28, so here we also need to or have two new boundary lines. And by doing this, you know, so after we split uh, some bucket, then both table initially they have five bucket. Now each one has eight bucket. Then we compute, the, you know, then we align all the buckets, okay, in, 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 this, uh, in this, you know, with a newly created uh, bucket. Then we compute the joint cardinality you know, for each bucket, one by one. And then we add them together. The, the joint cardinality estimate will be 21.8, which is much better than, than, than the joint cardinality we estimate without histogram, OK? As for the other operator, because we run out of time, the other operators are kind of straightforward. Uh, so, so we will skip them. And the way we do the, uh, uh, you know, we compute the statistic, we basically traverse the, the, the query uh, execution plan from the root of the tree, okay, in the post order, in the post order. In the post order, so basically what it means is, you know, first we go all the way down to the leaf node. The leaf node usually contains a table scan. So we have the statistic information at the table level and the column level. And then the information, statistic information will be propagated upwards, upwards. So say, for example, initially it has this minimum value, maximum value, and the NDV. And then after join, then we need to reset those value, OK? The, the minimum value, maximum value, and also NDV. Similarly, for other operator, like a filter, OK? like a union, et cetera, OK? And also, you know, initially, we just collect the number of records for table and the number of distinct value for column. 
And then based on this information, and then we can make some inference. Say for example, if two, these two values are close, then we can say that you know that specific column is we can we can decide if it is a unique key. If it is a unique key, then it can help us to decide if a join is a primary key to foreign key join. If it is a primary key to foreign key join with certain pattern, then we can decide whether or not we have a star schema. Okay. And this can help us, uh, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, it can help the query optimizer a lot to decide which join algorithm it is going to use. Okay, the next thing is I want to mention what configuration parameters you may need to pay attention to in order to use this uh, new feature. You know, uh, usually, when we have a new feature, in the first, I mean, uh, in order not to give the user any surprise, okay, usually we, we create a, a control switch. And in the first one or two releases, we usually turn off this control switch, okay. The reason is basically we do not want to surprise, uh, surprise uh, our user. Another thing is we all know that you know, in the first release, it is not perfect. Okay, so, so, but we encourage that you, 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 you want to, you, know, you, you may turn on this uh, configuration parameter. For example, in order to use CBO, cost based optimizer, you need to turn on Spark SQL CBO enable. Okay, and also there's another parameter. You know, this is a CBO join reorder. If you have like a five-way, you know, multi-way join, you can, it, it will basically try to join the, uh, join those uh, operation that can produce smaller output first. Okay, turn on that feature, turn on, on that uh, this configuration parameter, and also for the for the histogram support. Okay, so here you can, you know, there's uh, this feature Spark SQL statistic histogram enable. Now it is set to true, to false. You want to turn it on to be true. As for the other operator, for example, this one, histogram number of bins. Okay, right now the default value is 254. I think this one value is probably good enough. Okay, unless you want to have very, very good, uh, very precise, uh, uh, precise uh, uh, estimate. And then for the NDB number of uh, uh, distinct value, okay, NDB here we have the maximum er error. Basically, is a point zero five. It basically, it means you know uh, no more th uh, no more than five percent uh, error. Yeah. So let me give a quick summary. So in today's talk, we briefly talk about uh, cost based uh, optimizer in Spark 2.2. We show you, you know, what kind of statistic information we collect. And then in Spark 2.3, we further enhance CBO with, with, with histogram. The reason we want to develop this feature because we know that skew data distributions are intrinsic in, in real world data. It is always there. In order to use this feature, I encourage that you know you turn on these configuration parameters. Okay, histogram enable. So this is my talk. So any question? Thank you. We got about half a minute or so. <laughs> and this hypothesis that in real world data is actually skewed, you can see half of the people more than more than people, a lot of people on this side, very few people on this side. Um, you have a question? The examples that you showed were small, <laughs> whereas uh, real data uh, have many more rows of examples. So how do you determine the min and max based on that? Uh, so you said for in real world, how do we get the minimum and the max value for that? Because, you know, for Spark, when we, you know, when we collect that information, you know, we, we do parallel scan, okay? Usually it is fast. 
say for example like a TBCH, uh, you know, uh, usually you know it just take about you know ten to you know, twenty uh, ten to twenty minutes. Yeah. All right, we're out of time. Give a big hand to Ron.